This shot is from an upcoming project, so I thought it'd be cool to show you how I made it in After Effects. Now this effect does require a little bit of knowledge about After Effects, but that's all you need. You don't need any other plugins to make it work. And for the difficulty, I'm going to give it 3 out of 10 Adobe Crashes. When it comes to effects in general, it's best to take your time planning the shots. It's also best to use as many practical effects as you can. Take your time planning the characters blocking, where you're going to set up your lights, and where you're going to set up the green screen if you're choosing to use one. For this shot, I used a light directly aimed at the actor to create a harsh, strong kind of moonlight look, in a way. I also set up a green screen with a light to try and remove as many dark patches as I could, which we'll talk about in a second. Pro tip one, make sure that your talent shadow is not falling directly onto the green screen. You can fix this by either moving your subject forward or lighting the background. Pro tip two, make sure your green screen is wider than your actual subject, otherwise you have to do some masking and extra work like I did, so you keep that in mind. As best you can, make sure your green screen is an even color. You don't want a gradient where there's dark patches and light patches because that will cause some problems when you're trying to key later on. Also, as we mentioned before, uh, it's best to use practical effects when possible. I use wind to simulate uh, some hair movement and to make it look like it's windy up there. So keep that in mind, no matter what you're creating, always try and have a balance of practical and VFX. Firstly, we have to separate our talent from the background. In my case, I had to use a variety of methods to achieve this. For example, I used Adobe's key light effect uh, around the fine areas such as the hair. But um, I made the green screen a little bit too small so it didn't cover the whole of Keelan's body. This required me to mask out his arms and occasionally rotoscope parts of his shirt. Make sure you feather and adjust the mask expansion like so. The next step is to create the foreground and background clouds. And this was a bit of a problem because I didn't know how to create realistic clouds. My original idea was to use multiple static clouds and fade in between them and put some effects on them, which would have looked, um, all right. No, no, no. <laughs> I was either going to have to do that or I was going to have to look into something in Cinema 4D. So I was searching on YouTube trying to find some help, trying to find something that looked realistic and I came across this guy who I'm not going to try and pronounce his name because I'll butcher it. This simplistic no plugin effect really blew me away with how realistic it all looked. I'm going to leave a link in the description below so make sure you go check it out. The only real adjustment you need to make are changing the project resolution uh, to 3000 by 3000 pixels depending on what resolution you're going to export it at and you're going to have to change the color from blue to black if you're going to do it at night instead of daytime. Once we have our individual cloud layers we can begin turning them into 3D layers. Create a camera, position it where you'd like and then start positioning the clouds in 3D space. This step takes a bit of fine tuning to get a realistic result. Another pro tip is to change the view of your project. If you go down to your view tab and choose two view, you'll be able to get a horizontal view of all the layers in a 3D space. Create a new comp and then add your subject comp and then add your cloud comp in the same one. Also add in the background, I chose a nice starry background, which I kind of put down the opacity and added a solid behind, which kind of gave it a bit more of a darker look. Looking cool so far, I hope. In order to create the foreground clouds, I just did the same procedure as the background clouds, but scaled it up a bit and put it closer to the camera. I also keyframed the opacity of these clouds to make it look like the camera was kind of going through the clouds. Lastly, we can color grade it by adding an adjustment layer, putting on lumetri color and some grain, and then just playing around with the LUTs and the contrast and all that wonderful stuff until you get a somewhat realistic result.
And that's the end of the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. I don't know how important it is nowadays. As long as you're enjoying the content and having fun, that's all that matters. Don't forget to learn, create, and share. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.